Pepsi and Coca-Cola are two rival companies that have been involved in what people call the Cola Wars. Sounds a little like a Cold War, but it's really about their direct competition and the battle of which pop their buyers will drink. Me personally, I prefer Coca-Cola. I think it's got a little more kick than Pepsi, but that's a whole different video in itself. What we're going to talk about is an ongoing battle between these two giants that has been going on for years, both fighting it for the ultimate market dominance. So far, it's been quite a fair fight between them, but there was a point where Pepsi saw a breakthrough and they almost won with this sneaky little plan. Pepsi came up with a marketing strategy called Number Fever. With this, they would print a unique number on all the bottle caps, and if your cap had the winning number, you would be gifted a million dollars. Not a bad way to create some hype, I would say. While this strategy was larger prevalent in America, but still with the promise to change someone's life with a million dollars, it wasn't enough to turn the tables. Pepsi believed that the idea could still work, so they tested it in the Philippines to see what would happen. And well, as they assumed, it made a huge impact, and they finally believed that market dominance was in their hands. But once again, there was a little mistake they made which led them to fall behind again. Let's find out what happened by building a little bit of knowledge so we can best understand what really occurred. The Philippines is a country made of 7,640 islands with a population of 111 million people. But back in 1992, when this incident happened, the population was only 65 million. The Philippines is now a country that America heavily influences, like many others. American culture is something that you can find everywhere you look. In the fashion, the music, the food, and all the way to the beloved soft drinks we all have known to love. So when Pepsi and Coca-Cola both ventured to the Philippines, the competition for market dominance began. The Cola War was already ongoing for quite some time now, and with the Philippines market in play, Pepsi thought they had this battle secured. Now quick things to note. The number of fever campaign was already a popular marketing ploy in America, and it had given them satisfying results. So now, if it had seized the same results in the Philippines, we could have been living in a whole different world where Pepsi would have controlled the entire market, and Cola would essentially have banished. But as you can tell, that was not the case, and here's exactly why. Now let's recap their efforts to achieve their ultimate dominance. As mentioned, they started the number fever campaign in the Philippines and would use the public news to announce the winning numbers. If you were lucky enough to have the winning number, then you would be a millionaire. Well, not exactly. The promise was actually a million pesos, not a million dollars. A million pesos were equivalent to $68,000 at that time. And even though it's not a million, given the economy in the Philippines at that time, it was quite a lot, considering the monthly income in a middle-class home was just $100. But this money appeared to be a solution to all their problems. So naturally, number fever went viral in the Philippines. Kids were saving pocket change to buy Pepsi. Adults were collecting bottle caps. Many were even digging through trash so that they could find the winning bottle cap. All this in hope that they would hit the jackpot and would win a life-changing million pesos. Maybe this was the inspiration for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Well, at least that turned out to be an excellent movie whereas this turned out to be a horrible disaster. Things were looking great for Pepsi. Articles mentioning that over half the population in the Philippines were playing to their strategy, with their monthly sales increasing from 10 million to over 14 million, giving them an annual revenue growth of 40%. They felt unstoppable. But you know what they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, and that they did. As the number fever campaign began gaining popularity, people started to resort to violence to get their hands on these bottle caps, many being sent to jail. But the first fights were not the real issue. It wasn't until the point where murders began to be reported, which only got worse and worse. Pepsi saw what was happening, but their eagerness to win led them to turn a blind eye and continue with the campaign. Now, they also had this same campaign taking place in Chile, and this was the beginning of the biggest problems to come. When the time came for them to announce the winner, they made a huge mistake and put themselves in the worst imaginable position. Shortly after the winning number was released, they said there was a transmission problem and changed the number so the winner no longer would get his grand prize from Pepsi. This caused massive outrage and led to riots that started in the streets of Chile. Even with all of this, 
Pepsi decided the campaign would continue for a few more weeks and would announce the next winner number. This number was the one to tip the scales of chaos and really put Pepsi in the worst position they had ever been in. Number 349 So, what do you think was the problem with this number? Well, the problem was that the number 349 was already allocated as a non-winning number, meaning that there were thousands of bottle caps around the Philippines with the number 349. So many people already had these bottle caps in their possession, some even having 10 or more. Pepsi printed a total of 600,000 of the lucky 349 bottle caps, and as you can imagine, people were upset. As soon as the realization was made, people started gathering near the Pepsi plant to protest and claim their million dollar reward. Now obviously, they couldn't pay everyone the full prize amount, so Pepsi tried to solve it by offering a small amount to anyone who would bring the winning bottle cap. But people wanted the price they were promised, not a measly little handout. Within a few months of this all happening, the riots only got worse and worse. Due to the severity of the riots, it had resulted in five casualties, one of them being in the Pepsi factory, from a live grenade being thrown in, killing three Pepsi employees. Another horrible instance was someone getting caught in the crossfire of a Molotov grenade being thrown at a Pepsi truck and ricocheting off, killing an innocent civilian. The people were the tragic victims of this whole thing, as they were involved in the scenario, and in the end, they were the ones who suffered the consequences. The enormous turn of events was when a new article was published saying that Pepsi is somehow involved in bombing their own trucks. There were many newspaper reports regarding this matter at the time. According to some documents, many people who were captured by the police stated that Pepsi paid them to cause riots and trouble. They were the ones who asked them to bomb their trucks. Now, Pepsi denied all these claims, but according to people who were caught, Pepsi did this so that they could frame the people who were protesting the company so they could play the victim card and get out of the situation that they have caused in the first place. Now, this is something that we can never get an answer to. We will never know whether it's true or not. But if you think from a political perspective, then this could be true. But in the end, it's all just an allegation. And there is no solid evidence to hold it. It's just words against words. There was still someone who was willing to fight for the right of people who suffered significant consequences because of the Pepsi number fever campaign. His name was Vicente Del Fierro, and he was someone who was against the idea of number fever from the start. When things started going sideways and people were getting killed, he thought it was important to bring justice to these people. He gathered over 800 winners, and together they sued Pepsi for $400 million. He took money from some of the people who could afford it, and he gave pro bono to those who were not able to afford it. He fought Pepsi bravely, and he wanted to take this all the way. When his case was heard in America, the American court decided that it was a case for the Philippine court. He continued fighting in the Philippines. There was a point where arrest warrants were released for nine Pepsi officials. Pepsi also tried to bury him under paperwork, but he worked hard to win this case. Unfortunately, in 2010, he died due to heart failure after being in hospital for one year. To this day, Pepsi is apologetic for the incidents. Although they state to reporters that they don't have access to anyone who was around at that time and that they're not able to access documents regarding this case, they're still sorry for what happened in the Philippines and they try their best to make it right. They gave away almost $10 million as a token of appreciation to the people who had 349 number caps. However, in 2006, the court announced that Pepsi no longer had to pay any more prizes for these caps. Their company also suffered a significant loss. They lost the battle of market dominance to Coca-Cola, and their stock price went down as well. In the Philippines, many people are still traumatized by the event that happened in 1992, considering this Pepsi incident as taboo, and many people won't even touch Pepsi still. And I guess their anger is totally reasonable. They suffered the most because of a single mistake that Pepsi made. Number 349 So, what do you think about all of this? Should Pepsi have given those people the money that they deserve? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure you like it, as now you know that every deal could turn out way worse than you think. Why not subscribe, as we'll keep on bringing more great videos like this. Until next time, Bye-bye.